Welcome back, everyone. Live coverage of theCUBE here in Las Vegas for VMware Explorer. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're on the, the green set here. We've got the blue set over there. Dave Vellante, Lisa Martin, Rob Streche. Great coverage, wall to wall. We're on day two. We're talking to all the experts. Top story here is multi-cloud, super cloud, next-gen applications, of course. Generative AI is, again, is big centerpiece of the show. That's going to increase the importance of data, the importance of the new next-generation architectures, and we're going to unpack that conversation here during this segment with two experts and friends of theCUBE's deep knowledge, domain expertise in storage, networking, and applications, Eric Herzog. Uh, famous CUBE alumni who's the CMO of Infinidad. Eric, great to see you, thanks for coming on. Thank you, love to be on theCUBE, John. And everyone knows David Nicholson here on theCUBE, also the CTO in the field for Infinidad, talking to customers, bringing it down, both, both very technical, we're going to get down in the weeds, but also go back up and, and look at the forest and the trees in storage and data. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having us. All right, so first, Dave, we did a lot of analyst sessions too with theCUBE. Eric, you've been on. We've had so many conversations, Eric, on storage. You're like a walking data sheet. You can pull stats out like that from five years ago, talk speeds and feeds. IO and data right now, and, and LLMs and AI kind of are kind of the top story, going fast, doing training. It's the role of storage, storage architecture, storage in, in the cloud, all part of it. The industry right now is probably at an inflection point where storage will probably be more of a platform than ever before, but the game is still the same. You still got to store shit. Yes. So this is a really interesting time in storage again on this next wave. How do you see this? You've seen many waves of innovation. What's your, what's your take on the landscape right now? Because storage is not just about the hardware, but it's about the software, the architecture, how it all fits in. What's your, what's your, what's your view? So I think there's a couple key things. First of all, it's now going to be all about availability. If you're going to use AI in your applications and workloads, it can't go down. So the AI is going to feed in, so look at the apps. Some people will embed AI in the apps. Others will use AI to examine the apps or examine the data, so you can't go down. So that reliability, availability, which by the way has been a watchword in the enterprise already, is just going to get more important. Performance, obviously. But again, that's also been a watchword in the enterprise before. So I hate to say it, it's almost like some of this stuff is coming full circle. It's just that AI is exacerbating it. And then obviously the two new trends are one, because of the up and down economy, how does storage impact your return on investment TCO because it's expensive stuff. So what, how can you cut costs? CI, CIOs are never storage guys. They don't really like to spend money anyway. And then the last thing is really how does cybersecurity fit in? As you've seen all the AI experts talk about, well, if, if ever the cyber mafia gets a hold of AI, we're in bad shape. <laughs> and guess what? So the guys who are fighting it off better have uh, you know, cyber on their side. Yeah, and Scott, I was talking to a, a VC, um, kind of a later stage VC, I asked him about uh, super cloud and security. He's like, you know, at the end of the day, John, it's about the cheddar, the cheese, <laughs> the money. Data is the cheese, and the mouse wants the cheese. So you got to protect the cheese. And protection is not just data protection, ransomware, which we'll talk about, but with AI, a lot of conversation around private AI is here at the show at VMware, meaning the data is the IP. So this idea of the role of data continues to evolve, where it's not just store and move from A to B, it's about the value of the data in all phases of its state. This is a huge, Dave, this is, this is now another dimension. It's almost like 3D chess and storage with data. It's going to be valuable. And to help I keep it on-prem, when I move it in the cloud, so this policy around data for other purposes besides security and disaster recovery. It's like more maybe revenue driving. So kind of new waves are coming, new ways, new ways of thinking. How are you guys seeing this from a customer standpoint? Dave, what, what, what's your take? What's your take on that? So I absolutely agree data is the new cheese. I've been sitting here waiting to say that. <laughs> um, I think what's, what's interesting is, um, you know, as, this, as these evolutions occur, um, Eric just mentioned, you know, it's, it's sort of cyc cyclical. Um, you know, I saw the announcements around uh, vSAN Max, and it was interesting to me when it was first described as disaggregated, I thought, well, okay, that must mean disaggregated in terms of location physically, but it's like, no, no, no. The term disaggregated is used to denote disaggregating the storage from the server. In other words, unconverging, hyper-converged infrastructure. <laughs> so you could call it disaggregated or you could call it, you could call it unconverged 
uh, you know, uh, aggregated storage. Hyper, hyper unconverged. Hyper unconverged <laughs> storage. So, it, but it makes sense. We had, the, we had this issue when we went to the hyper converged model of this thing that I'd refer to as the devil's triangle of CPU, memory, and storage. And if you said you needed new storage, more storage in that model, you had to buy another server. And so, like the stuff we do at Infinidad is designed to, no, 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 aggregate all the storage and share it out. That's not a new concept. But so it is interesting to see the next iteration of vSAN going in that direction. But no, it, it is, it's always been about data, it always will be about data, and all of these tools are about surrounding the cheese yeah. like eager mice. Yeah, I mean, everyone wants to get the data, the data is a killer part of it. Eric, Infinidat's approach to the market relative to some of these modern discussions, modern applications are coming, um, this abstraction layer, super cloud, multi-cloud, environments, which today are essentially customers with stuff in clouds, from multiple clouds in one place, like toys sitting around, they maybe work individually but not together. There's a movement to make this stuff work together. How, does, how are you guys seeing this from a storage standpoint? Because at the end of the day, storage is a, that's a source of truth at the end of the day, that's where the data is. So we see a couple trends. First of all, we see seamless hybrid cloud integration. You've got to be able to move data back and forth between on-prem and off-prem. Second thing we see is because of the value of the data, and even especially because of the AI, there's issues of how do I keep it protected? In this case, legally protected. As you know, some of the things with AI, people have done it and you could just do it yourself. And what do you find out? Oh, that's pulling in patent data, copyright data, data that violates GDPR and other privacy laws. So in fact, several major Fortune 500s have told their, even in high tech companies, have told their employees, do not use this because they're worried about getting sued by people who own patents and copyrights and everything yeah. else. So the whole idea around AI actually is partially going to push certain amounts of data back on-prem out of the cloud, and then they're going to try to wall it off because yeah. the last thing they want is someone's working on their code, yeah. they use AI, next thing you know, oh wait, it's open source now. I just had 500 engineers work on that. I was spending $5 million a year, and yeah. wait, now it's open source? I'm, I'm in bad trade, I'm public, you know? It's interesting, uh, last year, I believe, you, you said this kind of same concept last year, and what's interesting, it's, it's, it's expanded to the point where here at VMware Explorer, they had their general counsel come out on the keynote Kind of gimmicky to make a point. I mean, all she was basically saying is like a showpiece. But the point is, that's the level of legality issues involved in this kind of like, you know, collision between data and kind of the hype of AI and the, the hope of something new. I mean, you, it's got to be reined in. So I would argue data is way more than the cheese. Okay, okay data is like the gold, the diamonds, and the platinum of the company, not you, just if, the cheese. If, if you find those things more valuable than cheese, I will grant you that. <laughs> so it's it's all about, that, you know, storage is really about applications, workloads, and use case. That's the other thing a lot of storage people talk about speeds and feeds, and no one, no CIO really cares about that. It's, can I make this AI workload that take three hours, run in 20 minutes? Oh, okay, that matters. Can I take a traditional workload, Oracle or SAP, that runs in three or four hours, can I make that run in 20 minutes? Can I make sure that that Oracle workload never goes down? They don't think about, again, the guys who run IT are all software guys, they're all CIOs. They don't, all they know is that it's sitting on this platform and that thing better not fail, better not go down, and boy, it better be fast. And so, again, it's making it full circle. In fact, all AI is doing is reinforcing what had been the 30-year-old IT enterprise thing, and now it's just giving it new life. So explain, fact, explain, very good. explain this, this is important because I think this is the, the key point. The game is still the same. It's just different environment. What's different? Is it the speed of the, of the change, performance systems? So I think it's the all, pressure it's on the all, business. It's a, it's a pressure on the business to leverage these new workloads, whether that be an AI-based workload, a container workload, whatever type of workload they're trying to do. And the issue is, certain of those things require even more performance. Yeah, I've been doing storage for 45 years, so I'm an old guy, right? I'm almost 70, and I'm telling you, I've never ever met a storage guy or a CIO or anyone in between, when you said, hey, we can make that application run three times faster, they said, oh, we don't want it faster. And of course you have people say, oh, we never need it that way. And then you turn around and when you're in an account call, they always want it faster, they always want it always available. And AI exacerbates that, hybrid cloud exacerbates that. And with data all over the place, both in the cloud and outside the cloud, you can't know what your data is up and it's not working, it's got to talk to the cloud and the data on-prem's down or the cloud data's down and the 
and the on-prem is looking for it, you just lost those workloads. They're not going to work anymore. So it's very, very critical. Dave, I want to get your perspective on what he's talking about because you also, the, being the field CTO of Infinidat, you also involved in um, CTO communities where you're talking to folks. Um, what's the mindset right now of technical architects and CISOs and CIOs as they, they come to the psychology? Look, I, I have a lot of pressure. I want things to run fast. And maybe I might want to run, have stuff run slower if it's for policy reasons. But for the most part, I want my apps running great. I want my business to be booming. It's going to be digitally native. What are some of the psychology thoughts going on in the minds of these people? Because there's a, almost a kind of a greenfield and brownfield opportunity going on at the same time, kind of coming together. Do you have any insight in color you'd like to share around what's going on in their mind? Obviously, you talk to them. There's probably projects to be worked on, deals to be done, but what's going on in their mind? Work backwards from that customer and share your opinion. So a lot of it has to do with coming to a real understanding of what the infrastructure requirements are. Uh, coupling that with what are we going to do with this AI thing? And a lot of the yeah. projects that I see underway are things that aren't going to be the sexy hallmark of you know, the dawn of the age of AI. They're going to be optimizations of existing business processes. But the big question is, what, you know, against the backdrop of something like uh, VMware Explorer, this question of, okay, well, what does it mean? What does AI at the edge really mean? What does it mean to be able to have a virtual machine with 16 uh, uh, NVIDIA GPU cores contributing to the horsepower for that virtual machine. What, is exa what exactly does that mean? And what are the fundamental requirements behind that? We just saw, you know, vSAN Max talking about disaggregating. Well, why? You would think that the sort of knee-jerk reaction from an infrastructure perspective is no, 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 what you want are these nodes with compute and storage in them. That's going to be the answer for it. But that isn't always the answer. And there are different phases to AI in terms yeah. of whether you're talking about queries yeah. that are leveraging language models. Um, the actual inference engines themselves, what they do to create and learn. You know, we don't talk about machine learning as much anymore, but really it's part and parcel with, with AI. Uh, you're teaching the machines and you're asking the machines, uh, how did you get that answer? And then saying, and then telling the machine that was wrong, don't do that again. That iterative process. So, so the, 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 short, the short answer is, they're all freaking out trying to find prompt engineers <laughs> because, they need, because they need people to yeah. combine whatever domain expertise they have with the technical know-how to leverage these things. Yeah. And in the middle is infrastructure. And what we do is try to provide some logic behind the scenes to be able to address what, they, what their requirements are from an infrastructure perspective. But that's, yeah. it's, it's a lot of confusion now. These are, the, these are early days, a lot of hype. Yeah. Look, senior, senior leaders that I work with, typically this isn't their first rodeo. And so what they're trying to sort through is they're like, okay, what is this like? I know this is like something I've done before. Yeah. What is that thing that we've experienced before that this is like? And there are a lot of analogies to be had. It's not, yeah. it's and, not something completely new. And so th and this is why we think there's a lot of architecture going on and zooming out, trying to look at the landscape. But the day to day, they got to make decisions. Where is Infinite fitting in? How do you guys vector into these conversations? Because um, I can imagine you have the tactical conversations. Hey, we, you should be buying our stuff. We have value to provide. Get that. What's the cherry on top? I mean, you've been 40 something years. You know storage like anyone else. What's different and what's the same? So what's the same is what the underlying infrastructure can do. It varies vendor to vendor, right? Some people can really do cyber resiliency and so other people put it on their PowerPoints and they can't do jack poo poo with it. Uh, and then it's what's the real value? And I think the thing that storage people are realizing, not just to us but our competitors, it's about applications, workloads, and use cases. How do you impact them? How do you protect them? How do you enable them? How do you make them faster? How do you make them more secure? And the one thing that's happened is prior to just the chatbot, and AI taking off literally in the last couple months. Go back six months ago, it was all about security, security, security. I mean, for a couple of years about IT security. The number two concern of CEOs in the Fortune 500 2023 survey, number two concern at 22% was cybersecurity. The number one concern at 26% was the recession. 
So cyber isn't going away, and you know AI was yeah, all course. the buzz price since January. But you go back to it's all about cyber, and I'm telling you, if you don't have the right security around AI in particular, you're really in in trouble. Independent of the legal and compliance issues, which make it even worse. Yeah, yeah. You know, people are going to try to steal the stuff. They're going to try to use AI, by the way, to steal it from you, yeah. which is going to make it harder to detect. So all these things are wrapping together, but it's really application workload and use case, and what can you do to optimize those things for me? Performance, availability, security, what are you going to do? And by the way, it needs to be seamless because my guys, I need to spend money on AI. I can't spend money on storage. So how does your storage, if you will, sit in the corner and just automatically do stuff so my, I can hire less storage guys and hire more AI software engineering talent. That's what you got to be able to tell them. So you got the AI has to be part of it, maybe a bolt on and integrated. Well, we or use both. we use AI inside of our box as we call it autonomous automation. We have probably 40 to 50 references that are public where they say we've had our Infinidat product and we haven't touched it for two to three years. Hmm. Now, how are they not touching it? All right. Yes, it's rock solid, but it does it on its own. Okay. AI built in, if you will. Explain why that's going to be hot, because basically what you just said was you're using AI to make it operate on its own, basically. Right. And you get a lot of success customers. Why are they successful? So the key thing it does is allows them to cut their CapEx as an OpEx and use that instead of on infrastructure, on AI software development or AI integration with Oracle or work, whatever their workloads are. And there's only so much money. So if you can cut money on storage and make it autonomously automated, doing its own thing, but still functioning the right way, then you can spend the money on these other projects, which are the, quote, cool projects, and there is a limited budget. They're not just running in the CEO and saying, yeah, oh, you want to fund AI, Mr. CEO? Sure, here's $20 million. It's like, no, figure out how to do it with the current budget I gave you. So VMware had a lot of announcements. They had like uh, the orchestrator, cloud orchestrator, NSX Plus, um, ransomware, death recovery. They had, you mentioned uh, vSAN, Max. Is that the right direction? Uh, or, I mean, it sounds like you've, you've said it's unconverged, which is kind of tongue in cheek. Hyperconvergence was the big wave, right? Right. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Are they going down the right road? Is that different from what Infinidat's doing? How, how would someone make sense of that? Or? No, I think, no, they're, they're simply with, with vSAN Max, they're, they're simply acknowledging the fact that sometimes having those units of scale that are, yeah. that are restricted in terms of you must buy CPU if you want more storage. If you, oh, but I really just need more memory. Okay, well, you must buy CPU and more storage. Um, the ability to scale independently just makes sense. Yeah. So it's, it, that, 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 that makes sense. Now, the question is, um, you know, objectively from an industry perspective, Will something like disaggregated vSAN Max, which looks and feels a lot like uh, what we would call a storage array, in a sense, <laughs> just with the, with, the, with the Lego pieces put together in a different way, what will it offer in terms of cost for performance, cyber resiliency, um, uh, and, you know, and, and all of those, all of those uh, metrics? That'll, that'll be a question moving forward, but, but, but in, a, in a broader sense, um, it will be really interesting to see how Broadcom's continued investment in VMware as it becomes part of Broadcom uh, will play out in this hybrid cloud space. You know, we, we, we have the ability to allow certain kinds of workloads to, be, to interact between on-prem and the cloud. VMware for years has been talking about this software data, software defined uh, data center stack that includes yep. network, CPU, and storage virtualization. Everybody loves the CPU virtualization. People are kind of have been kind of so-so on the storage virtualization. And frankly, the network virtualization hasn't been as popular as maybe people here would, would believe. So it'll be very interesting to see yeah. if you must have NSX deployed on-prem to leverage some of these things. Um, you know what, we're okay with that. The thing I love about being part of Infinidat is we try to be the best partner to the yeah. dance. Yeah. We don't pretend to be the center of the universe. We, some of the stuff we were demoing here has to do with supporting cloud, what they refer to as cloud native storage yeah. for Tanzu environments and VMware. We're fine, we're fine playing yeah. that role. The true test of VMware, in my opinion, is going to be can they handle the truth when it comes to NSX and will they give customers the option not to have it a requirement or dependency of something else? And that's going to be interesting because I don't think a lot of their customers are using NSX relative to the overall percentage. So we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep an eye on that. Great, great call out. 
In the final minute we have left, guys, and first of all, thanks for coming on, Eric. Great to see you, Dave. You're awesome. Um, great expert advice here. Give a minute or so to give a plug for the company, Infinidat, what you guys are up to. Uh, you're the CMO as well as, you're kind of like a product czar too. You know, <laughs> I mean, practically product and CMO. What's the main value, but why are you winning? What's the pitch? What's going on with the company? Give a quick plug. So the two things that are having us win is around how we help optimize real world applications seamlessly because of the automation. B, how we help them cut costs. Okay, we can consolidate. We have a customer, 25 different storage arrays. They have four of ours. They saved 10 million. We have another one that had 120 from another company. They now have 44. They've saved 60 million in the last two years so they can spend it on AI. So that's the value. And then lastly, the cybersecurity thing. We've imbued our storage with all kinds of cybersecurity technology. We can recover 30 petabytes of backup data set in 12 minutes, and we've done it live 10 times. And we can recover 200 terabytes of you know, primary storage data in four seconds, and we guarantee all that in writing. So it's really about doing SLAs and being about workloads and not being about storage speeds and feeds. Trust me, I can tell you all about a hard drive. I used to be at IBM and Mac store. I, yeah, I got, I go but back. No and, one cares, I can, right? I can go back and play the tape on the cube. I got <laughs> press Eric Herzog's data sheet speeds and feeds button. You go on forever. <laughs> the Energizer Bunny. I know you know your stuff on the speeds, but that's a good point on the on the on the on the customers because if they if they can get the cost savings, okay, right sizing has been called about, been talked about in the industry. Refactoring, right sizing is a better word. Just clean up the footprint, not lose anything, but gain and save, that's cash for AI. Which exactly. by the way, which by the way, is also under scrutiny for unpredictable costs as well. So, oh, I saved a few, few pennies here, but lost a bunch of Benjamins over here because I didn't understand how training works. And that's what, we're seeing a lot of that going on where the optimization of cash can really get a blind spot on where the investment should go. You seeing that same thing? Again, people want to move. Five years ago, everyone wanted to move to cloud. That was like the hot thing. Now everyone wants to do AI, it's the hot thing. So what that means is an infrastructure provider, not just me, but the network guys and server guys, show them how to save dough, show them how the apps work, so they can spend that money. Now on AI, it used to be, let's spend the money on the cloud. It is the repeat, it's just that instead of cloud, let's spend it on AI, and five years from now, it's going to be, let's spend money on Hinkelmeyer, whatever that is. <laughs> Super cloud's going to be it. Eric, Dave, we went over, as usual, two great experts on theCUBE here. Uh, Dave Nichols and Eric Kiosar with Infinidad. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We wrap with more day two coverage. We're going to five o'clock, 5.30, up until the very end, until they kick us out. We'll be back with more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>